Hello everybody, I hope you are, fi you are fine and everything is good. Now, we will move to the fourth lecture and the part two of the fourth lecture, production and costs. Overview of our lecture. In the last lecture, we have talked about production time frames. We divided the production time frames into the short run and the long run. Then we talked about production in the short run. Today we are going to talk about costs in the short run. And finally, we are going to talk about production and costs in the long run. So let's start with a review of the last lecture. In the, in the last lecture we observed that production and costs are two sides for the same coin in the short run. Meanwhile, we know that Number one, there is an inverse relation between production and costs in the short run. When production increases and productivity increases in the short run, the costs will fall. Number two, production in the short run depends on the law of diminishing returns. Number three, changes in total product and the average product depend just in marginal product. Now. We are going to focus on cost and its relation to production and how can we relate production to costs in the short run using the law of diminishing returns. Firstly, we should differentiate between three cost concepts in the short run. While referring to our previous lecture, we actually differentiated between total cost, which is a sum of fixed and variable costs in the short run. Number two, marginal cost, with the cost of the additional unit produced or the last unit produced. Number three, average total cost, ATC, which is the total cost divided by the units produced. Now, so, we can turn to an example to show how can we calculate the three different cost concepts in the short run and how these cost concepts relate to production in the short run. Assuming that rent is the only fixed cost and is equal to $55 per week, while labor is the only variable input in a certain firm, then we can show the cost concepts using the following table. So let's create and focus on this table. Here we have different columns, column number one quantity, then fixed cost, variable cost, total cost, marginal cost per unit, average cost per unit, average fixed cost per unit, and finally we have average variable cost per unit. Observe that each concept is calculated using this formula. So for example, total cost, fixed plus variable, marginal cost, change in total cost divided by change in quantity produced, average cost, total cost divided by quantity produced, average fixed cost, fixed cost divided by quantity produced, and finally, average variable cost, variable cost divided by quantity produced. So let's start with the fixed cost, and here we observe that the column for the fixed cost shows no change in fixed cost whenever the quantity produced changes. So when quantity produced increases, fixed cost does not change. Why? Because fixed cost does not depend on quantity produced in this case. So all these column will be filled with the number 55. $55 is the rent. So even this missing figure is what? It is equal to $55. What about variable cost? Here we observe that variable cost is a changing with production. So here, variable cost is zero. Of course, we are producing zero. Now, when we produce the first unit, total cost is 85. So we can conclude that variable cost is equal to 30. How do we get this 30? Because fixed cost is 55, total cost 85. So variable cost is equal to what? Total cost minus fixed cost. Total cost 85 minus fixed cost 55 equals what 30 so the missing number here is 30 dollars then 55 dollars 75 dollars 105 155 225 
here we observe that variable cost is increasing with more production variable cost rises as more units are produced as we observe here what about total cost total cost is the sum of column number two which is fixed cost and column number three which is variable cost so 55 plus 0 equals 55 55 plus 30 equals 85 55 plus 55 110 and so on and so forth until we reach the total cost of producing all six units of production 280 which is equal, equal to 55 dollars plus 225 dollars here also we observe the change in total cost and we will find that total cost is increasing with quantity produced what about marginal cost marginal cost the change in total cost divided by the change in quantity produced here the change in total cost 85 minus 55 gives 30 divided by change in quantity produced 1 minus 0 equal 1 so 30 divided by 1 equals what equal 30 and so on for the whole figures now what about this number 130 minus 110 equals 20 divided by 3 minus 2 equals 1 so 20 divided by 1 equals 20 so the missing figure here is what the missing figure here is 20 dollars and so on 30 40 50 and 70 what about average cost average cost equals what total cost divided by quantity total cost column number 4 divided by quantity column number 1 so 55 divided by 0 infinity 85 divided by 1 85 110 divided by 2 55 130 divided by 3 43 and third and so on for the whole numbers for average cost now we can move to average fixed cost average fixed cost equals what fixed cost divided by quantity produced fixed cost column number two divided by quantity produced column number one so 55 divided by zero zero 55 divided by one 55 55 divided by two equals 27 and a half so this missing figure is 27 and a half and so on we can calculate the whole numbers for fixed cost and finally what about average variable cost average variable cost equals variable cost divided by quantity produced variable cost column number three divided by quantity produced column number one so zero by divided by zero undefined then 30 divided by 1 30 55 divided by 2 27 and a half 75 divided by 3 25 and so on here the missing figure is equal to what 155 divided by 5 equals 31 so the missing number here is what 31 dollars in this way we have calculated the different cost concepts now let's observe the relationship between quantity produced and each cost concept number one as we observed before there is no relation between quantity produced and fixed cost fixed cost does not change with quantity produced then variable cost as quantity produced increases variable cost will increase but first of all variable cost increases by 30 then by 25 then by 20 and then started to increase by 30 50 and finally by 70 so here we observe that variable cost has passed by two stages firstly <coughs> variable cost increases at a decreasing rate then it starts to increase at what a decreasing rate what about total cost total cost also changes in the same way as variable cost with quantity produced total cost at first increases by from 55 to 85 increases by 30 then by 25 then by 20 then it starts to increase with an increasing rate 30 40 50 and 70 so we can conclude that both variable cost and total cost firstly increase at a decreasing rate with quantity produced and then increase at an increasing rate with quantity produced what about marginal cost 
we can say that marginal cost in this table is the maestro why it is the maestro because the change in marginal cost will determine both the change in total cost as well as the change in average cost as we will see after some time now marginal cost as more quantities are produced marginal cost falls from 30 25 and then 20 and then starts to rise to 30 40 50 and 70 so we can say that marginal cost has passed by two stages firstly marginal cost falls and then marginal cost starts to increase here what determines the change in marginal cost of course it is the law of diminishing returns according to the law of diminishing returns as more labor are added in the short run while all other inputs are fixed we observed before in the last lecture that firstly marginal product increases and then marginal product decreases so there is an inverse relation between marginal cost and marginal product when marginal product rises marginal cost firstly falls but when marginal product falls marginal cost will fall so here we are proving the inverse relationship between productivity and costs in the short run why due to the law of diminishing returns what about average cost we will found that average cost firstly falls till 40 dollars and then starts to rise so we can say that 40 dollars represents the minimum level of average total cost in the short run what about average fixed cost here we are dividing fixed cost with a fixed number which is a fixed number equal to 55 dollars by an increasing number which is the quantity produced so of course what happens to average fixed cost average fixed cost will usually fall why we are dividing a fixed number by an increasing number so firstly it was 55 then it was 27 and a half then 18 and third 13 and 3 over 4 and then 11 and finally 9 and 1 over 6 so as quantity produced increases total fixed cost will fall finally what about average variable cost average variable cost firstly falls until we reach 25 dollars and then average variable cost starts to rise so it passes by two stages so we can conclude that fixed cost will be a horizontal line variable cost will be an upward curve total cost will be also an upward sloping curve marginal cost will be u-shaped firstly decreases and then increases average cost will be u-shaped first decreases and then increases average fixed cost will be a downward sloping curve and finally average variable cost it will be u-shaped firstly decreases and then increases here we can see here we have in this graph total cost divided into total variable cost and total fixed cost both total cost and total variable cost will firstly increase at and at a decreasing rate and then at an increasing rate firstly increases at a decreasing rate and then at increasing rate so here the change in total cost is the inverse of the change in total product and this also proved the inverse relation between productivity and costs in the short run what about total fixed cost total fixed cost to the no not change of output it changes and so that's why total fixed costs is a horizontal line whatever the quantity produced is but here we should differentiate between sunk costs and fixed costs sunk cost is a cost that the firm has incurred has paid in the past period so for example here we are talking about all these costs that have been already paid and that the firm will not take these costs into consideration whenever it takes its decision to produce now in this now in this slide we turn to the 
production and cost in the short run comparing marginal cost with average cost here we can say that marginal cost is the maestro why it is the maestro because the change in average variable cost and the average total cost would depend on the change in marginal cost so as long as average variable cost is falling marginal cost will be below it and when average variable cost starts to rise marginal cost will be above it that's why both curves intersect at the minimum average variable cost in the same way when average total cost is falling marginal cost is below width and when average total cost starts to rise marginal cost is above it so the point of intersection of both curves is also minimum average total cost here we can reflect to the previous lecture when we talked about average product and marginal product now we can say that there is an inverse relation between average product average cost marginal product marginal cost as we will say after some see after some time in this lecture what about average fixed cost average fixed cost is a downward sloping curve because as more and more units are produced average fixed cost will fall now in this slide we can prove this invert relationship between marginal product marginal cost average product average variable cost here we can say the point of the maximum marginal product represents a point of a minimum marginal cost so when marginal product is rising marginal cost is falling and when average product is rising average variable cost is falling then the point of intersection of average product with moral product this point represents maximum average product on the other side the cost side this point of intersection of marginal cost with average variable cost represents minimum average variable cost so here we are proving the inverse relationship between productivity and costs in the short run now we can turn to the long run and just we should remember that the difference the main difference between long run and short run is the ability of the producer to control the inputs now in the long run the producer is able to control all inputs so all inputs are variable we do not classify costs and inputs into some variable and some fixed costs or inputs all inputs and all costs are variable in the long run so production and costs in the long run represent returns to scale what do we mean by returns to scale we mean by returns to scale that since the firm is able to change all its inputs the firm will be able in the long run to change all its size of production all its scale of production so here we should differentiate between number one increasing returns to scale we mean by increasing returns to scale that an increase in inputs by the firm results in more than proportional increase in output so for example a rise in inputs like labor and physical capital and so on so a rise in inputs by 10 percent results in a 20 percent rise in output here observe the increase in production is higher than the increase in inputs so actually average total cost will fall in this case in the long run we have falling average total cost here the firm will benefit from its larger size the firm will be able to divide its fixed cost around more and more quantity produced so average fixed cost in the long run will fall and as well average total cost in the long run will fall this case is also known as economies of scale so why what are the reasons for economies of scale or increasing returns to scale specialization yes now we can specialize in the firm the tasks can be divided among a larger number of producers or a larger number of workers each worker is specialized in a certain task so the overall productivity in the firm will increase as well as benefits of mass production yes now 
we are dividing a total fixed cost by a larger number of units so average total cost will fall in the long run number two case number two in the long run constant returns to scale as the, the name says here an increase in inputs results in an equal in a proportional increase in output so for example a rise in inputs by 10 percent results also in a 10 percent rise in output so the change in inputs is equal to the change in output so average total cost in this case will not change it will be unchanged here in this case in this stage the stage of constant returns to scale we can say that the firm has achieved its efficient scale of production in the long run yes now we can say that this is efficient production level that the economy that the firm should stop at that the firm should stick to here average total cost is at its minimum in the long run and finally if the firm continues to produce above the constant returns to scale the firm will enter the stage known as decreasing returns to scale or this economies to scale in this case an increase in inputs results in a less than proportional increase in output so for example a rise in inputs by 10 percent results in a five percent rise in output that's why this stage is known also as this economies of scale of course in this case the firm is overproducing and so the firm will suffer from lack of supervision the thumb workers will start to be lazy in their jobs and so average total cost will rise in this case so of course this is not a good case for any firm the three cases can be shown next figure here we can see the three stages number one economies of scale and we here observe that as more and more units are produced long run average cost is falling until we reach the minimum long run average cost this is the stage of constant returns to scale and here we have reached q asterisk which is the efficient scale of production the optimal size of production for the firm but if the firm continues to produce above this efficient scale the firm will enter unfortunately in the stage of this economies of scale now increasing the quantity produced will result in an increase in long run average cost so we can conclude that the optimal efficient scale for any firm in the long run is what is q asterisk where long run average cost is at its minimum thanks so much and see you